Hello, everybody. Welcome to day seven of our journey through Holy Week. Today is Holy Saturday. Jesus has been crucified on the cross. The disciples have scattered for fear of their own lives. They're behind locked doors. And uh, we're going to look at what happened on Friday evening and Saturday when the religious leaders go to Pilate uh, to request a guard to secure the temple for fear that the, that the disciples were going to steal away his body. And so we're going to be in Matthew 27, and it gives it's the only place in the Bible that gives the details of what happened on Saturday. And so we're going to look at that. We're going to start in verse number 57, and it says, When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who also was a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen shroud and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had cut in the rock. So this is a cave now, um, this tomb that Joseph of Arimathea, most likely a wealthy man, he has cut uh, in the rock a cave in a tomb to most likely to bury his own family members, but he had become a believer in Jesus. And so he wants to bury Jesus in this tomb. This is a fulfillment of a prophecy that Jesus would be buried in a tomb that had never been used or a new tomb. And so we see that uh, Joseph of Ar Arimathea goes to Pilate and he says, I want the body of Jesus. And Pilate uh, gives him the body of Jesus. It's so cool how scripture is fulfilled um, in all of this. Uh, in all of these events that are happening. It says, And he rolled a great stone to the entrance of the tomb and went away. And so this stone uh, is most likely 400 pounds to a ton, a ton and a half. And we see later in other scriptures that the stone was rolled away and it most likely was a round stone. Uh, there were other stones at the time. They, there were square cut stones. There were cork like stones that were wider um, and then they would kind of fit into the entrance uh, like a cork, um, still kind of a round stone if you think about it. But either way, this is a great stone, 400 uh, to a ton, a ton and a half, which would cause a great man force to even be able to move this stone out of the entrance um, of the tomb. Verse number 61, it says, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting there opposite the tomb. The, the women were not shut up in their homes. They were not scattered. They watched all of this happen. They were eyewitnesses to this event that Jesus' dead body was placed into this tomb by Joseph of Arimathea. And we also know that Nicodemus was there with Joseph, helping him with the spices, helping him wrap the body um, in, in, in this tomb. Verse number 62, it says, the next day, that is after the day of preparation. So this is after Friday. So now we are on Saturday. It says, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, sir, we remember how that imposter said, while he was still alive, after three days, I will rise. They remembered that Jesus had said that he will rise again, that after three days of him being dead, that he will rise again from the dead. And so it's interesting. Have you ever had somebody say something to you and then it gets stuck in your mind and it keeps playing over and over and over again? And it seems that this was happening with the chief priests and the Pharisees that they um, kind of couldn't even sleep the night before. They had this playing over and over and over again. And Jesus, even though he was dead, kept them awake. And they start going to Pilate because they have this saying that Jesus said over and over and over again, that the prophecy that he had said that he was going to rise again from the dead. And it seems like it was haunting them a little bit. And so they go to him and they, they say, this, this man said that he was going to rise from the dead. And then in six, verse 64, they tell Pilate, Therefore, order the tomb to be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples go and steal him away and tell the people he has risen from the dead. And the last fraud will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone and setting a guard. So the stone, this massive stone, is already in front of the entrance of the temple, or I'm sorry, the, uh, the tomb. And now uh, these 
chief priests and these Pharisees, they take a guard. These are highly trained soldiers that if, um, if somebody were to steal the body away, that's not going to happen. They are going to be executed trying to do this. Um, or uh, if somebody's trying to roll that stone away, it's not going to happen because they're going to seal this stone and the Roman soldiers uh, are going to see if somebody has tampered with this. And there's going to be evidence that, hey, some, some person tampered with this. And uh, also the Roman soldiers would not go to sleep. Um, they, they took their jobs very seriously. They were honorable soldiers. They were highly trained. They were not going to let anybody steal this body. And so there is a bit of a question out there as to, well, did the disciples actually steal the body away from Jesus? And it's it's interesting that the chief priests and the Pharisees actually make it to where that would be an impossibility and make it to where the resurrection story is actually more believable now because they put this seal on the stone and they put this Roman guard there uh, to secure this temple. And so this is a significant moment. A lot of times we just kind of brush over Saturday and I didn't want to do that with you guys. I wanted to let you know that this is a significant apologetic that this guard was there, that the stone was there, this huge, massive, heavy stone, and uh, that it was also sealed. And the disciples are locked away in their own homes. They are fearful for their own lives. And so the story that the disciples would have stolen the body is just really an utter impossibility because of the narrative that we have here. And the chief priests and the Pharisees who hated Jesus actually bolster our story of the gospel and the resurrection 2,000 years later. So I um, want you to know that and I want you uh, to trust in that, that Jesus, what we're going to hear about tomorrow, that he truly did rise from the dead and he truly was God. Um, and, and so believe that today. There's not a whole big application to take away from this other than uh, the story of the resurrection is true and this is one of the evidences for it. I'm going to pray for you and I hope you have a great evening. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the fact that um, I thank you that you're so wise and you're so sovereign and that you work all things uh, for your own glory. And uh, you even worked the chief priests and the Pharisees and you had them uh, worrying. The, the, this this uh, phrase kept uh, playing out in their head that uh, after the third day, I will rise again. And they go to Pilate and Pilate um, has them secure this tomb. And so we know that the, because the tomb was secured, that the disciples truly did not uh, roll this stone away. We know that Jesus um, didn't swoon on the cross and then somehow muster up um, muster up this strength as he laid in this cool tomb to roll away this stone because uh, a, a man would not have been able to physically do that. Um, and so we, we, uh, we thank you for this story. We thank you for this little blip in the Bible that does bolster the resurrection story and that we can trust in your word. We can trust in what it says and uh, that, that uh, the disciples wouldn't have made this stuff up about them being locked in, away in a room, um, fearing for their own lives because that is just embarrassing to tell people. And so I thank you that we can believe this, that we can trust this, and I pray that it would bolster our, our own faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.